Yeah? All right. So uh, somebody came saw me during office hours, and they were like, what is up with my GitHub stuff? Okay, so the first thing you want to know about GitHub, keep all your code. You got to get your, your code. You got to get your, your files on your computer organized. So this person had CIT85 folders in two places. That's just like basis for confusion just starting out. Right, so just one CIT85 folder somewhere, that's your folder. So for me, that folder, I put that into, uh, <coughs> you guys see my, my terminal there? Is that big enough? Uh, so I'm, I have that in uh, documents, I believe. And then when I list LS, I've got uh, HTML, CSS, you can see that right here. So as I go into HTML and CSS, right, I do a list and uh, there are all the different folders inside there that I have for this class. If I do a ls-la, that's going to give me a list, list all. Okay, and those are just my mnemonics. And so when I list all, I then see that I have a .git. So that .git tells me that I've initialized this as a git repo. So I would have done git init to initialize this originally, git init. And, uh, and I would have first created a repo up on GitHub and not added anything to it. And when I did that, it'd give me a few commands. And those few commands would say, to connect your, your local machine, use these commands. So there's a couple of commands I'd run in here to connect my computer with GitHub. But now that I have that .git, there, there, there are just a couple of commands. Git status. So everybody, you should write these down. Right, so that you have these, unless you already know them. Otherwise, get out that pen and write, write these down. These are the commands you absolutely have to know for Git. <laughs> There's only like four or five of them for the basics. Anybody still getting a pen out? You all ready? Somebody's still getting a pen out. So uh, Git status is the first one, G-I-T status. Git status, and that's just going to give me the status says everything is uh, up to date. Okay. If somebody else has added code, I might do a git pull. That's going to pull code from up there. If somebody else has added that, not necessary really for you to know, but you could add that to your list. So git status, git pull. So once I've done git status, I could do a git add dash dash all. Some people do a git add dot. Git add dot will add from whatever directory you're in recursively downwards. Git add all, git add dash dash all, adds everything in the repo. So I could be a folder or two down from the root of the repo. And uh, git add dot would only add some of the stuff. Git add dash dash all would add everything in the repo that has been <coughs> needs add in, adding. So this adds it to the staging area. So if I had stuff in staging area, then you know it would have been added to the staging area. I could do a git status again to see things been, have been added to the staging area. They go from red to green. And then I do a git commit dash m some git commit dash m some message. So I just add in some message. And then after that, I just do a git push, and that pushes it up. If it's in the staging area, where is it actually? Mm -hmm. So the staging area exists so that if you've changed a lot of different files and you want to commit them in certain groups, you could just add one group of files to the staging areas, git add, and then you could name the specific files instead of git add dash dash all. You could say git add index.html. Right, and then you could do a git. I don't know how you add multiple files. Let's look at that real quick. Git add multiple files. I'm looking for like file name, file name, file name. That's it right there. So it's just one file name after another. So you could add them in groups to the staging area. You could add one group of files that have changed to the staging area, and then you could commit those. 
And you could add another group of files to the staging area and you can commit those. So the staging area allows you to, if you've changed 20 files, you could add in 10 to the staging area with git add and then name those 10. And then you could commit those 10 and they'll be under one commit message. And you could add like the next five to the staging area and then commit those and they'd be under another commit message. So that when you do your uh, git log, you might you would have different commits, right, for uh, those different files. So the commands you need to know, the commands you need to know are git status, git add dash dash all, git commit dash m, and then your message in double quotes, and git push, and then use those at the terminal. Okay. All right, let's learn something new. So we looked at a uh, position fixed, relative, and absolute. Do, do we see all that last last Tuesday? Tuesday, did we see all that Tuesday? We saw fixed, relative, absolute, yeah? So what is fixed? Stays put no matter what. So is that taking it out of the normal document flow? Is that taking the element out of normal document flow? Normal document flow is just like divs. Uh, divs are, you know, things are block or inline. It's block and inline lining up. Uh, or inline block, right? So that's a normal document flow. Things just sort of lining up and stacking against each other. Is position fix take the element out of the normal document flow? Yeah, it, it took it out, right? And we could see that if, you know, we just kind of like add another example here. O3. And then let's look at our CSS. We have a div, and then we have static, which is uh, height, width, background, color, margin, left, border, and fixed, height, width, background, border, position, position fixed. Okay? So that one's position fixed. If 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 uh, this is height, width, background color, margin left, 10 pixels, and this is border. Let's see what this looks like, this page looks like. Okay, so that, that one's just sitting right on top of another one. It's fixed. So if we didn't have that, we would have that right back to normal document flow because this this one here in the HTML uh, div static is before div fixed so div static this one is before div fix this one so that's back into normal document flow you see it's just block level element and the next block level element and uh, but when we put in the position fixed takes it out of document flow and it's sitting on top of where things are normally stack up. So that's a phrase you hear or you'll read about document flow. So fix takes it out of document flow. <coughs> what about position relative? What's that? How's that work? Relative to what? Relative to the window? No. Not to the viewport. Relative to itself, which is really kind of how we all go through the world. Relative to me, how is everything, you know, how does, how does everything, how is everything relative to me? <laughs> I don't know, it's a joke, but it's also true, right? We're all self-absorbed. How does that impact me? What? They just invaded Sierra Leone? Eh, I'm in the mood for ice cream. I'm in California. So relative to itself, and when you put relative on there, then you could start start using uh, things like top or left or right or bottom. And Shea Howe has a really nice description of this. Uh, positioning content and uh, 
positioning floats, inline block, reusable layouts, uniquely positioning elements, and uh, position box offset, offset properties, top, right, bottom, left, right? And so when things are relative positioning, like there's a picture of relative, uh, relative box, you know, box offset properties do it. So uh, does this take it out of normal document flow? Is this out of normal document flow? No. Because that, that space where it belongs is held. And everything else is still document flowing around it. And we just, relative to that space, let's just move it a little. So that's relative positioning. And I was just looking here to see under relative, uh, the relative value for position property allows elements to appear within the normal flow of a page, leaving space for an element as intended while not allowing other elements to flow around it. <coughs> so that's position relative. And then what was uh, position absolute? Yeah, relative to the parent, right? So absolute in relation to whatever parent element was above it, position absolute. So you can see here, I've told it to come down this much from that one and over from the right that much. And uh, the CSS on that was uh, top 120, right 20. Mm -hmm. So that's how it put it relative to its parent in that one spot. So there's a fair amount of things to wrap our heads around. We have position, and then we have display, right? And we had display block, display inline, and a lot of elements just naturally default to block or inline. And then we also had inline block and display none. So we have position, we have display, and, uh, and then we had, uh, you know, the box model and box sizing and margin zero auto. But display and position have really kind of given us a lot in display inline block. The next thing we have is float and flex box. So we're going to look at those. So float, before I do that, I really recommend that you do read this chapter, Shea Howe, is chapter five positioning content because I'm giving you one perspective on it but then just reading one other person's take on it will uh, help reinforce it and uh, I'll point out uh, one deal here at the very bottom I can find it. Absolute, relative, uniquely positioning elements. <coughs> Bring your usable layouts. I don't know. Whether it's better to use floats or inline block elements to lay out the structure of a page is open to debate. My approach is to use inline block elements to create the grid or layout of a page and to then use floats when I want uh, content to wrap around a given element. Generally, I also find inline block elements easier to work with. There are new CSS specs in the work, specifically flex and grid. that will help address how to best lay out pages. Keep an eye out for those. <coughs> so, you know... It, uh, it could be a little bit like, which do I use? Display, inline block, or position. But these are each little tools that you'll pick up, and then you'll kind of be like, okay, I need something to happen. Which one do I use? So uh, next thing we're going to look at is float. But before we do that, I'm just curious. If we go to can I use, we've already seen Flexbox has 96% uh, of browsers support it. That's pretty good. What about grid? We just read about grid. Uh, CSS grid layout. 
9%. I won't be teaching you grid. Right? Nobody's supporting it. Maybe it'll come around. Maybe it won't. 9%? I don't want to know it yet. Okay, but he mentioned it. Hey, watch out for grid. Okay, well, let's go see. Where's grid at? 9% of browsers implement it. It's not worth knowing yet. All right, so float was originally designed to float images. And so here's a page with images. And I've got a div, the big red box. And then the image has a, a red border. And then inside that div, I have a paragraph with all that text. And so inside the div is a paragraph and an image. And I said float the image to the right, which makes the text wrap around it. That's what float was designed for. People have appropriated float to do layout, to do more layout than just like having text wrap around something. But when you need text to wrap around something, think float. All right? That's what float was designed for. So to get this page to work, <coughs> This code's all on GitHub if you want to look at it. Here's the CSS for this page. All right, so there's a div, and that div contains an image and a paragraph with a bunch of text. So for the div and the image, I just put a border around each and some margin on each. And then uh, for the image here, it's uh, just floated right. That's it. So I gave it an ID of right. The image down below, I have another setup identical, right? where the image is floated left. So I floated one right, floated one left. But that's it. Float right, float left. Kind of cool. There are some little gotchas. And one of the gotchas is something known as overflow. Whoops. I got a little overflow on this bottom one. Up here I've got enough text to sort of make that containing div big enough to hold the image and the text. Down here I don't have enough text for that div, for this outer div to also hold this image. This image is now floating, so is that out of the normal document flow? I'd say it is, yeah? Is it floating on top of the normal document flow or what? Let's see what Shea says. I don't know, I don't have the answer. Chapter 5, and we'll look for flow. And flow, essentially a flow property allows us to take an element, remove it from the normal flow of a page, and position it to the left or right of its parent element. Interesting. Float allows us to take an element, remove it from normal flow, and position it to the left or right of its parent. All other elements on the page will then flow around the floated element. An image element floated to the side of a few paragraphs of text, for example, will allow the paragraphs to wrap around the image as necessary. <coughs> Just kind of exploring some of these concepts like document flow. Because if we didn't have this, uh, if, we didn't, if these weren't floated, what's normal document flow? So let's take out right. We're going to take out the right, oh no, we'll take out left. We're going to take out left. So what's normal document flow now? Image, paragraph, right? That's normal document flow. Image is block, and paragraph is block. But when we add that in, all right, took it out of document flow, and now this thing's floating, and the div doesn't even maintain room for it. So that's overflow. Anybody know how to fix it? Clear? clear? Yeah, clear might be one way we approach that. We'll see clear in one second. I like clear. But there's also the setting overflow auto. And by the way, it might seem like I have all the answers. That's because for like two hours before class, I'm working <laughs> out all these perfect solutions. And believe you me, they are tailor crafted, right? Like I look around, I figure out how do I want the code to work. That didn't work quite that way. That looks stupid if I presented it that way to the class. Oh, I got to keep it all in a div, not outside a div. 
All right, cool. Now it's working. That's the way I'll present it. So just because I look like <laughs> I don't always have all the answers. But the, a lot of programming is finding the answer. So there it is with overflow auto. So it's just telling it, hey, you know what? Don't let this thing overflow. And the setting on that is overflow auto. And it needs to be set on the parent, whatever the parent is that's containing it, right? <coughs> So overflow auto is another little tool to add to your tool box, right? Today, uh, my, uh, I don't know if you guys know about Radon. We're going to see a Radon website here in a little bit. But my mother-in-law had higher Radon levels. Uh, I've kind of gotten interested in this because it's a big deal back east. And, uh, and then we went to Portland, and it's a big deal in Portland. I thought, well, it's a big deal here. I got kids. So I bought a machine. I tested my house. My levels were a little high. Nobody in Fresno fixes it, so I figured I'll figure out how to fix it. Fixed my house. And then my mother-in-law, her levels were high, tested her house. Well, today we fixed her house, and my friend Randy, who's a contractor, helped me. He did most of the work, actually. <laughs> but he has a van full of tools. He's got a van full of tools. He's got a tool for everything. He's got a mirror with LED lights on it that at one point we had this hole. He had to stick it down in the hole so he could see what was around the corner. Okay, cool. Well, you pull that tool out when you need to see around the corner. We pull out Overflow Auto, right, when, oh, it's Overflow in the div. Overflow Auto. Got to keep that in there. So that's what you're learning is all these different tools to do this kind of work. It's part of the trade. So that's Overflow Auto. So Float was originally designed for floating images. That's what you just saw, right? You hear Rio say, hey, we could clear stuff. We could use uh, clear to clear floats. We could also do this. So there is a uh, kind of similar, like the image, but this time I just did a, I think that's a div up there. Yeah, it's a div, just a box. So there's the CSS, so you could picture it All right so we have uh, this time I just did body div section <coughs> so they're not contained within anything does that make sense before I had had it all contained within a div I had a paragraph and an image contained within a div here I just have a, a div and then a section my div has a border which is green so that's that one and then my section just has a bunch of text in it, it has a border which is blue and my div, I also, well, that's kind of stupid. I gave it an ID because I only have one div on the page. There we go. And that shouldn't change anything. So border, I floated it left. I gave it a width and a height and a margin for my div. Do you see I just also cleaned up the code, make it more readable? Like you got to know what's on your HTML page. If I had more than one div, this wouldn't work. If I didn't want that applied to all divs. Okay, then I need an ID, but I only got one div on this page. So there you go. So get rid of the extra. What? I love it. Tell me, what's your comment? Sure, if you wanted another div on there, give them classes, give them IDs. Oh, okay. But they're all div. They're all just div, 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 div. So that one, uh, that one's just, you know, a thing and a thing. And then here, and I think I could probably get rid of this box. You can see I have uh, the same deal here. One div and a section. Exact same CSS but a lot less text. So what do you think is going to happen? Are we going to get some overflow? I think so. Mm. Overflow. All right. Well, last time we, we did, uh, we did the, auto, the overflow auto to clear that. Okay. But for overflow auto to work, both of these things would need to be contained in some sort of a container element. And then I'd apply that overflow auto Right, I'd have to have it in a container element. I can't use overflow auto in this situation. 
So this situation, I could uh, clear both. I could use clear to clear that, and this is what clear does. Okay, same deal. But now the section has clear. So this is floated left. That's floated left. And then this has something clear both on it. And actually, I kind of like my stuff to be like this. Since divs go first on the page, it's going first over here. <coughs> See the symmetry? Div, section, div, section. All right. So let's look at this. Clear both. Cool. But notice that this is floating, but now this one's just like, I'm below you. I cleared the float. I'm not paying attention to the float. I'm beneath the float. That's what clear does. You could do clear left, clear right, or clear bo bo both. So since I had float left, I could have done clear left right here. And same thing. Or clear both, which would clear left and right. But if I did clear right right here, well, there's no float right to clear. I'm still like that. So both would work or left would work. I'm going to leave it at both. And then just to keep my uh, code samples uh, good symmetry, take out that ID. And then just reorganize this to the top or that to the bottom, same deal. And I have one more example here of clear both. And this is the CSS. So we got a whole bunch of divs with class box floating and another div with class after box. And so I like the way that CSS is organized because the div is going to apply to all the divs and then class box will apply to class box and class after box applies to class after box. So every div will be have a border, it'll have a background color, the text will be aligned in the center. And then things with class blocks, box will be floated left. They'll have a width and a height and a margin. And then after box will be, uh, will be clear left. So what's that going to look like? Can anybody picture that? We have a bunch of things floated left. It's kind of interesting. If you float things left, they kind of go into their own flow, right? They're now sort of in their own flow where they don't overrun each other. It's like they're all brothers. We're brothers of the float hood. Man, we don't mess with each other. We respect each other's space, right? So they, uh, they're they all just floating and they respect each other. But this guy's been cleared, so he's down below. He's cleared the floats. <coughs> All right, so you just learned about float and clear float and overflow auto. I want you to use those three things, float something and overflow auto. I want you to do something overflow auto. And then I also want you to do something uh, clear, where you clear something like this. Okay, so I want you to uh, create one file or two files. But you got to use those three things, float, overflow auto, and clear float or clear both left, right, whichever.